Hello there and welcome. Today we're gonna talk about watch crystals, AR coding and how they can change your choice of watch. Back when I bought my Seagull 1963, the main choice besides the size was the crystal, either acrylic or sapphire. Currently I'm into Omega Speedmasters and after buying two different versions, the reduced with Hesalite and the 2021 Professional with Sapphire, I wanted to talk about it. Let's start off with the obvious facts that everybody should be aware of. The scratch resistance. With acrylic crystals, scratch resistance is basically non-existent. And because of that, every accidental scrape or bump will take a toll on the crystal. Sapphire, on the other hand, is nearly impossible to scratch if you don't play around with corundum or diamonds in your spare time. If it's that simple, why would anybody today pick or even produce a watch with an acrylic crystal? Sapphire might be scratch resistant, but not shatterproof. And with the Speedmaster especially, that's important. While on Earth, shattered glass is annoying. In space, it's a real danger for the astronauts and their equipment. Flying shards of glass are hard to catch and the risk of injury is major. Also, scratches on acrylic crystal can simply be polished out with any acrylic polish. After wearing the acrylic down for a long time, you can get a replacement for about 30 bucks. And that's it. Even if plastic might not sound as alluring as sapphire, choosing it can have its benefits when it comes to the price and usability. Now what should you choose when it's time to decide? My first consideration would always be your lifestyle and usage of the timepiece. When I wear a watch, it's for 24 hours per day and with that comes a lot of stress, accidents and not the easiest of treatments. My Seamaster 300M made acquaintance with the concrete, metal corners and many more things, but only the bracelet and the metal parts of the bezel suffered. An acrylic crystal would have done too, but scratches that are too deep are difficult or impossible to polish. Because of that, if I can, I choose sapphire. It saves me the time of polishing or even exchanging the crystal. Also, depending on the watch, getting an originally signed crystal can be harder than you might think at first. As a side note, I wanted to add that the only bad crystal type in my opinion is mineral. I would never touch a watch with it, since it can be scratched and can't be polished. Now one could say with my maltreatment of watches, Sapphire could break, which would be expensive at around $250 for a replacement. But until now I didn't even come close to breaking one. Still, it's not that easy to decide since nearly every watch that offers two versions is a bit different. Let's go with the current Omega Speedmaster Professional for example. First, the Sapphire version offers a see-through case back. For many people, the case back might be a good selling point, but the authenticity of the Hasselite version when looking at the original Moonwatch is an even bigger one. Further, the Hasselite version is thicker at 13.58mm versus 13.81mm with the Sapphire watch. This comes due to the extreme curvature, which is also responsible for the vintage looking distortions. The friction fit of plexiglass is the reason why exchanging crystals for one another is not as easy as you might think. A sapphire crystal requires a gasket, which sometimes can be fitted in a plexiglass version, but it voids the warranty and prices quickly reach $550 for the gasket and the crystal itself. This is also the reason why the Sapphire version of the current Speedmaster Professional comes in at about a thousand dollars more. A visual disadvantage besides the lesser curvature of Sapphire is the milky ring it has compared to the Hesalite crystal. The outer dome looks from most angles a bit milky white, which is why some people dislike it. The anti-reflective properties of acrylic are in general way better. And because of that, all sapphire crystals need an anti-reflective coating, 
or for short, AR coating. The coating is necessary, but it can bring its own downsides. There are two ways manufacturers usually approach AR coating. One is coating it only on the inside of the glass, and the other one is coating it on both sides. Rolex only coats their sapphire crystals on the inside, but the previous and the current Omega Seamaster 300M for example are coated on both sides. The thing is that now your glass can scratch, but the coating on the outside can, and you'll see it if you look closely. From certain angles it looks like your watch is scratched, even though it's only the AR layer on top. All of the small sparkly reflections of the glass here are scratches in the AR coating. The advantage of a double coating is that in almost all incidences of light it looks as if there is no crystal at all. The only thing reflective here if you look closely is the dial of the watch. If the coating on top of the crystal bothers you or if it's too scratched there is always the option to get it polished off. With many watches, you'll probably have to compromise on the crystal somewhat if you are like me and have a certain preference. Ultimately, this is just a guide to learn your options and the drawbacks of each crystal. Do you prefer one crystal over another? My choice with most watches would be a single AR coated sapphire crystal or in the case of the Speedmaster, a Hesselite front with the sapphire back. If you liked the video, please leave a like and if it wasn't your cup of tea, tell me why in the comments down below.